okay, when I go to a site and I see that magic happen, which would have happened inside your brain, but when you go there and see that, wow, that's happening. Yes. And that triggers uh, a sense of... It's that it. painter's canvas movement, right? You see the canvas and there you already see your picture kind right. of a moment, yeah? Right. Today we have with us a very special guest, a member who is inspired by nature for his design, a member who is a founder of an architectural firm called Come Design. He's passionate about teaching and he's passionate about bringing change not only in his ideas but also to the world at large. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next guest for this fantastic show networking and beyond mr chetan ks welcome mr chetan ks to networking and beyond uh, before we go ahead with the interview there's something that i really want to say uh, when i joined the community of bni uh, in fact you were one of the first people i interacted with and i just could see the whole bni personification in you where um, i felt immediately welcomed and for such a senior member to talk to me as if you were my friend and we already knew each other for so many years, that's the first memory I ever get of you uh, when I came to the chapter on the very first day. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have you on this wonderful show and today uh, I think everybody watching will witness uh, what you are made up of as a BNI member. Uh, as an entrepreneur and also as an individual today and I, I truly think there's going to be a lot of learning a lot of takeaways from this conversation and I hope you're excited to begin yes I am Lalit thank you for <laughs> inviting me here and uh, it's a pleasure uh, to share the journey which we have gone through I, both in BNI in my profession and my personal life and share my thoughts with with all the people out there okay uh, it's a pleasure to have you fantastic uh, i think you know uh, i'm super excited i'm 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 uh, super blessed to also say to share this stage because there's a lot of learning that i'm going to have um, i've had a friend who's into architecture and i've always been intrigued uh, by architecture and uh, I, I have a tattoo which says less is more right, uh, right? and I, yeah I, I, and you also pointed out on the very first day and I remember that uh, very stint right takes me back to that warm memory uh, so so before we get into what you do now I want to I want to know what you did to get okay. where you are now okay okay how was your journey like uh, in the entrepreneurial world because as a student you were pursuing architecture but once you came to the entrepreneurial world, there was something different from architecture that you had to learn. How was that journey in the last two, two and a half decades of your learning experience? How has it been and if, can you share with us? Right. Uh, my journey in architecture actually happened in 91 where I joined the course. Okay. And then there was a major change somewhere in 94, 95 when I joined a particular architectural firm called Jason Fountainhead, which changed my whole perception of my personal life itself. Mm -hmm. And post that, uh, the journey has been quite uh, challenging because uh, as a student uh, and also in my experience of working in that firm, I was never introduced to the world of business. We were always working in this idea of uh, passionate building of a design. So, so I, I mean, for a long time, for almost, uh, I would say 20 years after my profession, the profession has always been dictated by passion. It has never been dictated by the business mindset which we showed. And that definitely took us places. Uh, to be fortunate, we one of our buildings was inaugurated by Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam when he was the president of the country. Fantastic. And we got uh, to design the, uh, you know, the auditorium space and the activity space for the Film Actors Association. Mm -hmm. So all the film actors, I got to interact with uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Ambrish, Dr. Vishnuvardhan from the Kannada film, film Fraternity, who kind of you know understood uh, uh, that we were capable enough of giving them that space. So this is highly driven by passion. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the business model uh, came in somewhere when I joined BNI. Okay. And I joined BNI close to around I think seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, I joined a particular uh, chapter and uh, suddenly I was introduced 
to a point where I could ask somebody for business, which was never in our mindset. We were always a business model which expected somebody to walk into the office. Correct. So uh, the b and journey took me on to that path where I could ask somebody for business and said that, uh, you know, there's a lot more potential for the office to deliver. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, earlier I always thought that asking somebody for business was, uh, was not right. <laughs> okay. And uh, that limited the, the possibilities of what we could do. But yeah, this journey happened and uh, also it triggered off for me a lot of uh, new entrepreneur thoughts. I wanted to travel the world. Um, and I started asking people uh, saying that I want to go to Sri Lanka, anyone wants to join me. And then the, within two days I got 80 people asking me whether they could join me for, for a tour of uh, Sri Lanka, which is an architectural tour. So I ended up traveling to Sri Lanka almost seven times with various architects and designers. I traveled to Japan thrice, I traveled to Bali, I traveled to uh, Dubai, uh -huh. all with architects. So that became an entrepreneur journey by itself, <laughs> where I could travel for free because I was curating the whole program and yes. taking people across. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, I think that's uh, an aspiration that most entrepreneurs start getting because once you start crossing your own border, you, you don't only look at creativity itself, but even business is culturally so different right and it gives you all sorts of experiences and i've been to sri lanka myself and i can definitely say even though there's not too much of a difference but the way business happens the kind of transactions the kind of negotiations the kind of designs you find is completely different and it's so unique and to experience it and the best part about it is for an entrepreneur to be so susceptible to it you can go get inspired by it and come recreate your own True. that's the ultimate magic and i and i'm so happy that you've been doing that and it's something that even i want to do travel the world speak to a lot of speakers and see what kind of style they have and even though the internet is right at our doorstep seeing somebody live is more powerful right so that's something that i'd love to do and thank you for that quick uh, you know uh, introduction sir i want to ask you now you have a firm called come design k h a m uh, what does the word come mean because i've always been intrigued by the word and second you're also uh, you also have another institute that you've been working on very hard and very passionately that is your uh, Humpy School of Design. Um, can you quickly give us uh, a summary of both as right. to what it Let is? Let me start off with uh, come design. Mm -hmm. Come um, was a word I came across in uh, 96 when I was traveling uh, uh, across the country for my thesis project and I went to a college called uh, School of Planning and Architecture in Delhi. And I saw in their library a book which said, Come. And it was an exhibition which they had organized in 89. And it was this documentation of that exhibition. And then I, I was quite interested to really understand what Come means. Uh, come in Sanskrit, it's a bijakshar. It's a bijakshar which is literally as powerful a sound as Om. Uh, come means concepts of space, right? And since we deal with this idea of space creation, space creation either through architecture, through education, through uh, any any form, through music, through through uh, products, whatever, we said I think that's the right word mm -hmm. for me to associate myself with. And that's when way back in uh, 95, 96, when I was still a student, I, I really fell in love with this word. And for making it easier for people to understand, uh, the easiest way to, for you to understand come is to put it to sukham and to come, okay. which is about uh, emotional spaces. Mm -hmm. It's a space of emotion. So how do you create spaces? And uh, the practice has always been this inquiry of how do you create those kind of various spaces. I would also like to bring in another input which came to me from my journey with Jason Fountain and Office. There I realized that uh, for me, definition of my life, definition of creativity was about literally understanding what is my boundaries, mm -hmm. what I need to work with, and then consciously stepping out of that boundaries so that the boundary gets larger. So you break certain norms which you have put for yourself. And then you go beyond that now 
and start exploring various things. So it could be the way I look at a brick. So can I look at a brick rather than just a building a wall? Can I make a door out of it? Or can I turn the brick on its side and start building with it? So these kind of inquiries start coming in. That happened even in education. That happens even in business for me. That happens in my personal life. Fantastic. Uh, so that's when uh, I've also been, uh, now I'll come to Humpy Center for Design. I've also been a, a faculty for a long time. When I was in my third year, I used to take classes for my first year students. <laughs> uh, thanks to my faculty then, who trusted that I could teach those students. From then onwards, I've been teaching across. I've been doing a lot of workshops. I've been doing, uh, I've been visiting faculty in various schools of architecture across the country. And I've also right now been a part of certain faculty development programs where we train faculties mm -hmm. of architecture on, on design teaching. So uh, with this journey, uh, I realized that there's a certain lacuna which a, a formal school has, right? Which has certain challenges in the way they teach students. Mm -hmm. And there's always requirement or a need for a student to look beyond that box, their boundary of a college. So that's when we said, uh, let's start something which is, which creates a platform for this design dialogue. And uh, in the meanwhile, I was traveling to Humpy for a few projects of mine, and I fell in love with that place. It's a beautiful because, uh, place. The rocks there belong <laughs> to, uh, to a few billion years. They were the first rocks which were cooled down during the Earth's formation. And it has so much of stories to tell. Could be in terms of the rock structures, could be in terms of plantations, could be in terms of the architecture, the ruins, of everything. So I said, this is the right place for us to get into a space for design inquiry. Mm -hmm. So we set up this Humpy Center of Design uh, at uh, Humpy, where we are allowing, we are doing workshops on nature-inspired design thinking, we are doing workshops on paper folding, we are doing workshops on uh, form finding with design. Uh, we are working on setting up an incubation cell for craftsmen there so that we can support those craftsmen and bring them into the oh, wow. main strata. We are creating a curriculum for various schools of design, not just architecture, products, fashion, okay. uh, craft, sir, all if, of them. There. Sir, if I may just intervene and just ask because, you know, what you said was you know, something very powerful in terms of how you're helping other people become better uh, students, architects and all of this. Now, to even go on the line of teaching, you have a line of inspiration before that, right? Now, I want to know that when you go out seeking for this inspiration in terms of your uh, travel, in terms of your learning, whatever you've done, my only question here is, there's a small gap where you inculcate this into your business model, right? So is this your USP? What is your USP in terms of uh, through come design? And I'm pretty sure that is those learnings is what you inculcate in Humpy School of Design for your students. So I want to know this one prior part as to how do you inculcate this uh, design and how do you get inspired? What is the USP of uh, come design in terms of making these buildings? Right. I think uh, um, I, I don't know if the word USP is the right thing. Because the Even I feel I, it a little undermining. I know. No, I, I, I am not <laughs> negating that. But the moment you start using the word USP, you're starting using the unique selling point. Yeah. Um, well, I think as designers, uh, even though the end product is to sell something to people. True. Uh, but uh, it should be more about how do you experience that product. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, like you rightly said, my experience of looking at various people's way of things. So the strength of mine is about being a good observer, mm -hmm. uh, literally working like a sponge and absorbing as much of data as possible. And then you start dialoguing with that observations as to why is that observation an, an inspiration for you. It could be nature, it could be a building you've seen, it could be an element you've seen, it could be a person you've met. Mm -hmm. So you observe whatever you want to look from them and then you start at dialoguing with that observation within mm -hmm. yourself. Once that dialogue is, is kind of triggering certain thoughts, then you look at a medium to express yourself. True. It could be the, in the form of a built form mm -hmm. or it could be in the form of a business model. Okay. 
right can you give me a small example of something i know without seeing there is no true feeling to it but on a verbal way can you just tell us one specific or two specific inspirations that you had and you've inculcated into into your project right now say for example uh, i was i was looking at this uh, idea of a tree mm-hmm. right nature so you look at a tree and say you look at the way it branches out and you look at the way i mean why does tree branch out in a particular thing one of the reasons is to literally get in stability the structural stability for itself to stand so that it spreads out to a maximum area mm-hmm. now can i look at that as an idea for architecture right so you look at the tree the way it forks out and then you say that uh, is my structural systems the same way if nature does not look at transferring loads on a 90 degree why should my buildings transfer load on 90 degree right then you start questioning you start transferring that thought process that observation into this inquiry and then start expressing it into a built form so we ended up designing a school uh, and orinko with chanuchud he executed the project for us where we uh, and he had the structural engineer also with him where he looked at how that uh, Uh, this idea of what we were talking about about a tree got converted into a steel structure and that saved a ton of money for uh, the uh, consumer right so this is one way of literally looking at observation assimilation in- interpretation and then expression mm-hmm. um that's a fantastic example and uh, i'm pretty sure we'll try getting a picture of that and we'll try popping it in somewhere um sir moving on I I want to know in terms of your business where do you see it in just a sentence where do you see it in the next 10 years in just a sentence yes in just a making sentence. tons of money and making lives of people awesome awesome <laughs> that's fantastic sir so now let's get to the next part of the segment where we're to- going to talk about how this business has been happening and you clearly mentioned that bni has been a catalyst in your business so i want to understand as a veteran in bni uh, as probably the most senior mem- member in the vega team i want to understand a few things from your bni journey and the first thing is can you give me quick three takeaways from your bni journey so far in just three words okay um networking is one word definitely you network you t- try and meet more people so you expose yourself to more people uh, you give them you give yourself more visibility so networking is one word the next big takeaway is ask if you ask you're given right Uh, so that's one big takeaway which was never a part of me before bna uh, the third one is to scale up right because uh, um, the the platform is so beautiful that it allows you to scale up your what your standards you've kept for yourself mm-hmm. right if i'm if i'm looking at uh, let's say a 10 lakh mm-hmm. uh, budget if uh, otherwise by looking at the network which is possible through bni i can start looking at a crore of business correct i can literally scale it up 10 times if required true so these are the three good takeaways i have from that's fantastic sir i have my next question is you said ask right now the other side of it would be to also generate a referral uh, a referral through you know just doing the good things by giving by being there i want to know what is your ultimate process for referral generation apart from the ask right apart from just asking what else do you think will generate maximum amount of referrals for a bni member right so i'll go back to this idea as to what is the philosophy of bni okay okay which is what changes the whole parameters mm-hmm. when you go to any networking meet everybody goes there expecting to take something back with them right but when you go into a bni meeting everybody is there to give so if everybody gets a chance to take back something but in a otherwise any other regular networking since everybody is going there to just take there is nobody to give there are only few people who are there to give a opening a connect but bni opens up that pandora's box right and it says everybody out here are here to give 
so let's identify and give reference to each other and that's been my strong philosophy so whenever i do something we call something called a one to one where i have an interaction with another fellow member and understand him much better so that the trust value between us both is increasing other than the bni meetings we do this at a personal level my personal commitment is that with my 25 years of experience in the field uh, and the 45 years of being on earth can't i generate five reference for that person <laughs> and it's definitely possible that i can identify five people i know whom he can benefit from mm-hmm. right? that's that's fantastic. the first part that's fantastic and i really think that philosophy is a very strong one and uh, understanding that you're walking into an environment where it's completely filled with givers and you start be- becoming a giver and this is some magic that i experienced uh, a few months ago i just said it on the uh, uh, one of the episodes that you know when i walked inside it felt so good i think giving increases a person's self worth and spirituality I, i i don't know i mean correct me if i'm wrong because you've been you've been a veteran in the whole both sides of it bni and business i feel it increases a, the spirituality of an individual because you're not expecting something right you're going there unconditionally to give and when that process happens in synergy it's something magical and powerful which is truly what bni is true, true. yes so which brings me to my next uh, uh, question can you tell me one such magical story one such magical story that is that you'd love sharing like you can say a success story uh, that that has really you know put a smile on your face you know every time you think of it right uh, yeah there are many such magical stories but for me bni is a is a world of magic so, but let's if i have to take one thing out i think this was even before uh, we formed the vega chapter mm-hmm. uh, when we were doing what we call as the coffee meeting to set up the first team of uh, vega uh, i was introduced to a particular person who wanted to build a kindergarten school by another bni member who was uh, ani kumar uh, she introduced me to uh, her friend chetna and said both of you i am sure will will match and you will be able to do magic and then really fell in love with the philosophy of how they teach children right very very much the way i would want my children to learn which is about doing experimenting doing and then learning rather than just being taught over the board and understand so that got converted to an architectural expression for me and that lot generated a lot of business for uh, myself and my chapter members uh, who got to construct it and who got to uh, provide some services for them but this was one huge magical thing i think cumulatively it generated close to around 5 uh, to 5 and 1/2 crores of business for the chapter Uh, during its initial forming time itself wow wow i think uh, that puts a uh, belief in a lot of uh, members who have just joined the process it gives a lot of, a lot of them to uh, have faith that it's going to happen and you got to stick and i believe bni is a long term game it's it's not a short term game where you come in for 6 months 8 months you make a quick buck and you leave that's never going to happen because bni is based on a relationship right everything is a result of that relationship and i think that was my biggest takeaway because a lot of people who are driven just by business just want their quick exit quick money uh, you know and quick exit but the the part about that is that easy come easy go it will go out very quickly right uh, so so which which comes to my last question about bni um what is that one message you would want to give uh, any fellow bni member about your learning like one take away and say do this it will happen okay believe 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 in the system uh, there's this thing which has been expressed in a lot of bni uh, sessions because bni is a huge uh, boulder of possibilities okay it's it's a huge boulder of possibilities it's it's like the magic potion of uh, asterix no mm-hmm. in, the, uh, in the cartoon asterix so you need to put the right herbs into it mm-hmm. and one of the right herbs you need to put in is belief mm-hmm. belief in the system mm-hmm. belief in your your network partners and positivity right so you start doing this 
you start bringing in positivity into this thing you start putting in the right kind of herbs into the boulder and you'll see that magic happen the magic potion coming out in terms of business possibilities in terms of networking in terms of whatever reaching out to your dreams it'll happen i i am sure this this platform is like that <laughs> that's fantastic sir thank you so much for that uh, lovely take away and even i truly believe that belief is the right way to go so so we're entering our last and final segment of the interview this is the fun part this is where right. we we really get to know uh, you on the personality wise so do you want this, me to answer funnily uh, <laughs> so that, that that i'll leave i'll leave it up to you uh, so what we'll do is these questions should be answered within 5 seconds or 6 seconds max So we have about ten questions. Are you good to go? Okay, awesome. Let's do this. Okay. So your first question is: What motivates you to get out of bed in the morning? Coffee. <laughs> nice. Uh, name another business profession you wouldn't mind getting into. Uh, filmmaking. Fantastic. Why? Uh, yeah, it's again another journey into space making but uh, i've always been fascinated with films because uh, both architecture and film making is about storytelling that's fantastic i'd love to talk about this but this is a rapid fire what's your favorite part of your current job okay when i go to a site and i see that magic happen which would have happened inside your brain but when you go there and see that wow that's happening Yes, and that triggers uh, a sense of. It's that painter's canvas moment, right? You see the canvas, and there you already see your picture kind right. of a moment. Yeah. Right. Um, name three business leaders you would want to have a discussion over dinner. Okay, I would pr- try to pr- identify some pretty people, but. <laughs> 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 right. I think Anne Musk is one person I would okay. definitely want to uh, have a dialogue with because I think he is he is somebody who is thinking. literally out of the box and doing things uh-huh. um, there's one more person called Do- uh, dr rajendra who is a waterman in uh, rajasthan mm-hmm. he's bringing in tremendous changes to people's life uh, okay. by understanding water is a very important source mm-hmm. and uh, one more person i would definitely want to uh, meet up is uh, uh, i know grd tata uh, i know he's not there but uh, he is somebody who visualized the future for the country and uh, gave it an amazing platform for us to evolve uh, either <laughs> yeah I, you know indian institute of science is set up by him true for somebody to visualize like that it would be great fantastic um, i mean i think all great three picks uh, so one more uh, next question name one bni member that has inspired you a lot okay there's quite a few quite a few i wouldn't uh, i would be doing injustice to name just one I think Annie Kumar is definitely one of the first uh, people who who kind of influenced me uh, who still is a is a mentor to me um uh, then um, Sushil uh, uh sorry uh, yeah Sushil Songoi who introduced me to BNI MSP concept uh, was one more person uh, Sunil Sethia from uh, uh, from Chennai he triggered a whole lot of thing when he visited bangalore a few years ago mm-hmm. and had this session he he changed the way business needs to be done and of course right now we know mr ayush uh, who is making uh, changes across the world by launching the first 200 member chapter That's and the kind of energy he brings into the room is is mind blowing that's fantastic uh, just to bring about this is not the first person to bring about annie's name uh, uh, in this you know so i mean now annie is getting all these brownie points and i want to do a quick one to one with annie you should you I change should, your word yeah yes uh, if you were given a million dollars what would you do with it okay i would i would uh, scale up humpy center for design no doubt <laughs> the, the i mean i think it'll be great uh, if you were given a watermelon what would you do with it i would try and make it a helmet nature inspired thinking here as well i like that uh what were some of the most inspirational books or videos that you can recommend okay uh at present especially uh in terms of business models uh i'm reading a few books which are quite quite interesting um one is called story brand it talks about how you build your uh, a uh, story so that you are not the hero of the story but you are the mentor in the story and you know that the 
user is the hero of the story. It's a beautiful narration of how you connect uh, business and filmmaking. So that's one book which I definitely would ask people to uh, read. Uh, at the at the romantic level, I would definitely want people to read Kalidas' poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, he is, I mean, I read a stanza of his on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, stanzas from uh, the Vachanas, mm -hmm. uh, where you read one Vachana and you can dialogue on, the, on it for the whole day. And you can create various interpretations. Uh, so three very important things which could impact you on your business as well as your little person life. Uh, one advice to anybody who's not joined BNI? Join. <laughs> no, uh, I will give you a reason. I think uh, the pandemic was is one turning point for a lot of people's businesses. Mm -hmm. right? It's it's definitely changing the way uh, people look at business. I think uh, uh, the pandemic has given everybody an opportunity to really go and ask people for business. And here you have a platform which is already set up, which is almost 35 years long from across the globe who are willing to give because they're all members of Givers Gain. Fair right? Enough. And I think without a second thought, join, uh, it will change your way, it will change your life in the way you do business. Fantastic. And I would definitely second that as well because I've seen my own impact. So um, last and final question, if you authored a book, what would it be called? Okay, I'm, I'm actually authoring one, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice time. So, you can, you can give me maybe probably your next book or if you want, you can give me... Right, no, I think this book is called Come. Uh, because it's not just a, a journey of the office, mm -hmm. but it's a journey of uh, various thoughts which is coming in and it's being converted into spaces. Mm -hmm. Could be architecture, could be business <coughs> models, could be various things, but we are converting these thoughts into... Uh, a book format. So, Come is the title of the book uh, of how do you look at the world through space. That's fantastic. Uh, sir, I think it's been a fantastic interview. I want to ask you one last question for this interview before we leave. Um, what is that one message you have for that young India, that young architectural India, if you want to be more specific, what is that one message you want to give? Okay. Okay, I will answer it straight to the camera. I think it is about breaking your known norms of what you think is only right because the world is so much of opportunities. So if you can step out of what you think is right, you'll know that there are larger rights to be achieved. Right. So move forward. Don't fear to experiment. And only when you experiment, you make progress. You might fail, but you're making progress. So experiment. That's fantastic. Uh, I think it's been a great half an hour that we've had in conversation with. And it's, I mean, there are a lot of takeaways from, uh, from, your, from this entire conversation. The first thing is how you live life. And I, I think I'm intrigued and inspired by it myself. Th that is you, you getting inspired by nature. And it's, it's, it's such a harmonious thing to see that, you know, you go to different places, you understand. And sometimes I look at it as if the place is calling you rather than you wanting to go to the place. I feel sometimes the place is calling you and there's so much value there. So my first thing is always be a seeker, always be uh, w willing uh, to keep yourself open, let places call you and you go to places and learn. My second area is remember that inspiration is all over you, right? You don't have to go everywhere to seek inspiration. You don't have to have the world-class education to seek inspiration. All you need is a mind of, uh, you know, understanding that inspiration and then immediately that happens. Then moving on from, from my BNI take, a, a BNI take away, I get uh, belief as my strongest uh, takeaway point because you got to have faith. It's a long-term process. You got to have faith and it's going to happen for sure. And again, like you said in your uh, first question that once you get into the process, you move into a room of filled with positivity uh, and here are people who want to just give and that changes the whole process. And finally, from, from the kind of life that I've been uh, ask, uh, understanding from your rapid fire question, I know that you got to live life as much as possible every single day. And that's what you've been doing and that's how you've been inspired. So thank you so much. There's one thing I would like to share here. Sorry, if no I, I know no I'm problem. taking a little longer, but 
something which inspired me more was my wife's journey mm -hmm. because I she, I know a lady who was near her deathbed and the doctors had given her a 5% chance of survival mm -hmm. and she was a dancer by profession and she was paralyzed head down and she fought with her mind she fought with her mind and today she's teaching kids dance this is a story of three years and if I look at it and I say if I come across any uh, blank wall I know we have gone through that journey <laughs> and this is peanuts and the wall just vanishes okay um, so it's uh, I would dedicate this whole dialogue for to my wife Vijayalak wow well I, I think uh, uh, I, ha I don't have words to say uh, because it's it's truly inspirational. I've known you and your wife and, and your children, now they're my students. Uh, it feels extremely overwhelming and the kind of warmth that you and your wife and your child exu exuberate as a, as a family is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I see all your learnings, the kind of passion you have for life, even in your son, uh, which, which just which just says that you are one amazing person as a business man, as a BNI member, and as a family individual. Uh, for a person who's had it all 360 degrees, thank you so much for being on this wonderful podcast. And I think I'm looking forward for a lot more interaction, a lot more learning, and a beautiful journey ahead together. Thank you so much, uh, Chetan sir. It was thank a you, pleasure. Thank you, Lily. Pleasure is mine. <laughs>